uh, recording for our own note making thing. Go on. Mm -hmm. This might actually be pertinent to the whole story of connecting to the Star Wars situation as well. Uh, the, the metrics, as I understand it, is a system of nodes, right? Like databases. And if you're in like Windan, you can access all the stuff that's on the Windan data nodes, like no problem. That's the connection is really good. But if you want information from somewhere like Archaos, you have to send the request for information, get the information, or or the information has to be processed on the Archaos node and then sent back to Windan. Right. I don't. I don't think there's like a big central supercomputer that's running the whole metrics. Uh, so here's what I want to do. Uh, I want to approach this question from an entirely other angle. Okay. So uh, for a second there, let's let's ditch uh, let's ditch the concept of Netflix Netflix altogether. Right. Uh, easy for me because this was before my time. Uh, I'm like, eh? <laughs> what what even this is? <laughs> yeah. This calls back to a time when the Chaos Nova universe had things like mm -hmm. a, a main council running things, mm -hmm. you know, like... Yeah, exactly. Uh, so and it, really yeah, done. yeah, and and it kind of sounds like a centralized information system. But uh, what I would do is let's start from farther away. Uh, let's look at the whole quote-unquote uh, mapped cluster uh, or, or the, you know, the known known planets, known, known systems where uh, our human explorations and human interactions take place. So, point one, space is big. Uh, mm -hmm. Real-time uh, communications don't even work within one system. <laughs> uh, at the same time, I would say that low... That's true, actually. Yeah. So yeah. That's something that was hinted at in Tower of Vaza as they were approaching things. Uh, they wait until they're in a, mm -hmm. a communication range where they can actually talk in uh, close to live. Yeah, so like if uh, if you can talk to somebody with three minute delay, that's okay. That's an actual communication. But if you have to uh, talk to somebody with ten minute delay, that's already frustrating. Mm -hmm. So so it's so it's like uh, in that sense, uh, direct communication in many cases. Uh, is less a conversation and more like exchanging letters. So that's mm -hmm. that's one sort of useful nugget to think about. Uh, but yeah, so uh, for a second there, let's uh, think in context of one system. And uh, let's go even closer. Let's let's think in terms of one home world uh, with its uh, nearest. Uh, uh, nearest uh, connected doodads like may maybe maybe it has populated moons maybe it has uh, stations and and uh, outposts uh, near it or like outposts on, on asteroids that mm -hmm. maybe redirect the asteroids or whatever so anyway uh, let's 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 think in terms of a home world and its satellites uh, you can have real real time uh, communication there. Also when you think in terms of a ship and or a fleet and or a space station uh, that might be populated with a certain culture, uh, then again with within each of these uh, smaller bubbles you can have real-time communications. Uh, now, so, so this is like one piece of information to consider. Uh, another uh, and uh, what I'm uh, what I'm speaking of, it, it's it's not that um, the nuggets of information that I'm presenting are not necessarily in a causal. This is not a logical string of argument that I'm making. I'm just sort of uh, bringing up points as uh, as I think of them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. not 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 each not uh, not all of these points are like logically connected. I'm, I'm just sort of considering different. Uh, bits. Okay, so the next bit that I'm weighing or, or, or considering is storage of information. So
so uh, here we have to think back to old earth and the expeditions that once came and uh, and settled in the cluster and a lot of the information that that comes from earth had to be storaged mm -hmm. and accessed because like it was it was you needed that you needed that to survive you needed the information you needed the data to uh, uh, build up the biospheres on the uh, on the new home world you you needed all that you needed a database of uh, life forms to be able to keep on experimenting you needed mm -hmm. the database on people to you know create the population uh, so etc so a similar concept that I had for quote-unquote culture kits uh, for for my people uh, would probably apply uh, in many expeditions. It's just that for my peop my people are uh, especially uh, obsessed case or well not obsessed case but espe especially determined case in that they know that they represent a small nugget of people. They are, mm. a, a, and a certain group of those people are espe especially determined uh, to hold on to, not to hold on to, but to, to keep their culture alive. So mm. they have worked out like the like all sorts of rituals and practices and uh, and uh, customs that all help to. Uh, carry and transform their knowledge and their culture in such a way that it isn't just a museum piece but instead it is a living uh, developing thing that still holds uh, retains parts of the old uh, and it's more active yeah exactly uh, the, uh, the the example that I like uh, to bring up with this is that uh, uh, for years and years uh, we used to think like like we we have a pretty uh, solid archive uh, archive knowledge or we we have a pretty sort of uh, uh, well recorded uh, knowledge of our national costumes uh, from certain eras. So it's like uh, last few centuries or or maybe maybe two three centuries of how our national costume looked like this is like a big thing important thing etc and uh, uh, the sort of quote unquote traditional uh, clothing is something to uh, cherish and hold on to and for some this means that uh, uh, that when you uh, replicate or recreate uh, those uh, uh, those items of clothing clothing you have to stick to exactly how it was written down mm -hmm. that specific year and uh, that is a, wow. that and that is the way of stagnation but instead uh, there is uh, uh, among the small islands on our coast uh, there is one where at least until recently uh, women were still uh, wearing the sort of traditional uh, striped skirt as an everyday thing and uh, one idea that struck me as a sort of uh, example of successful remix is that these skirts have uh, survived to our day because in the 60s the girls used that uh, fabric to make mini skirts. Mm -hmm. So it's like if uh, if somebody had told them then no 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 that is not the way the real skirt is up to your ankles and uh, and has to make you ugly <coughs> then the tradition would have would have died out and ended up in a museum but because they took something of old and uh, recontextualized it uh, mm -hmm. in into their own uh, value system and in the sort of current time then the tradition went on it just transformed <coughs> so uh, uh, wh what I'm what I'm getting at with all this is that uh, there would be ways to storage information uh, on storage media 
and there would also be this sort of living uh, living memory and living storage uh, which which can happen among several cultures and of course uh, the cultures of Chaos Nova uh, cluster itself uh, would develop new ways probably mm. Uh, but this this would mean that you have like uh, smaller patches or smaller bubbles or smaller islands of memory. Uh, so let's uh, uh, once again I'm gonna zoom out and think about the uh, mapped cluster cluster of human new human homeworlds new human civilizations, which are far apart from each other, and mm. for a while they remain far apart. Uh, before the breakthroughs in science are made and before the uh, transit as we know it now becomes uh, becomes a thing mm -hmm. uh, so you would have the small hub smaller uh, smaller hubs of information storage and uh, up to a point communication so uh, that sort of co uh, goes together with your concept of uh, nodes or info nodes as uh, like storage nodes, communication nodes. Uh, now, a third point that I, I would sort of think about here is to ask the question, so who then, uh, who is at the center of these nodes or who, who manages these little mm. bubbles? Uh, and uh, my thinking is that, again, we can, this can vary a lot like you can have a certain group of people or or a nation who are very motivated to hold on to their culture and who are preserving certain information that way and then you have the uh, scribe orders who are dedicated uh, to uh, holding on to information and gathering information and storing information and interpreting information so that there you have another group you could also have like uh, local governing bodies uh, who need archives and, and stuff. So basically uh, what I'm trying to say is that there would be uh, various different interest groups uh, who store, uh, store and exchange information. They would, have, they would do so uh, because of different interests and they would do so via different means so it's that uh, basically this is this is where I'm sort of trying to chip away from the idea of a centralized network I'm thinking mm -hmm. more in terms of many small networks that are finding ways to uh, uh, to link up their knowledge if they so choose so it's like not all of the knowledge is necessarily available to everybody uh, but some knowledge can be shared and exchanged between uh, groups uh, and facilities and organizations etc uh, who are not necessarily linked themselves mm -hmm. uh, and when it comes to so and, and now the fourth uh, idea nugget uh, <laughs> to add, yeah, you, you're running with it. Uh, actually, now I'm going. I'm. I'm just going to repeat stuff that we have already established earlier. So the fourth nugget is the information storage and exchange technology, and uh, this is uh, this is where we also have to like uh, think in terms of local, and then think in, in terms of uh, ac across the cluster or like. So within uh, within the home world and its satellites, you would you would have some sort of uh, uh, some sort of direct transfer. So basically, like like we like we have in or I like we have on Earth now. Uh, now, if you think about farther away places, like. Uh, places in one system that are far away from each other and between systems then you would need uh, carriers that bring no, uh, bring uh, packets of data from one place to another and uh, again I would think that uh, this can vary 
So you can have people in ships uh, carrying uh, information from one place to another. Like let's say there, let's say you have a trading vessel that uh, regularly transits between two systems, uh, and uh, during that they will also carry some bigger data packages from one place like to another. Like just as a side job, but uh, we travel between these two places anyway, we might as well just take the data with us as well. Well, I wouldn't, say I wouldn't even say a side show, but more like, uh, yeah, like le let's say you have, mayb maybe you have mercenary companies or military vessels or, or trading vessels who then take as an extra job. So it's like, uh, it's like uh, the... Uh, post train or 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 post what's the coach stagecoach? Yeah, that's the Barrow Pony Express. Deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the interplanetary Pony Express deal, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you think back, what uh, what we have mentioned in Seeker is that you can also have like these uh, uh, transiting drones. Who who transit back and forth between systems and within mm -hmm. one system? Because if you like, if you have a small uh, small drone thingy uh, and and it does a transit inside a system, then the energy release that uh, or you know the transit exiting burst is not as catastrophic as it is for bigger bigger things, bigger ships. So it is allowed for these li little little shits to just jump around, mm. uh, and these are like uh, carrier pigeons that, uh, or, or like cou courier. So uh, basically, think courier drones uh, who jump into points uh, of transfer and exchange messages and then jump into another point and exchange messages and so on. So in Seeker that was the point where uh, where Jewel was at the Prosperitas uh, system and uh, when she was approaching the the prison state well uh, was it the prison justice center so when she mm. was approaching the justice center then at some point there is the note that uh, data transit from all around the system start catching up to her. So it's like her uh, mailbox is, is filling up with all the uh, messages that are arriving from the system. Oh, when she and Fortune are in sort of like the holding area and, sh and she's looking through a data pad and all the messages... That, that, that too, yeah. Uh, that, that's when she was actually reading them, but the she received them earlier. Mm. And uh, uh, think back when she um, when she has her v verbal sparring with Ferris, and Ferris uh, tries to blackmail her in, or like F Ferris threatens her that uh, that he will report to quote unquote council, mm -hmm. and she shows him the data and says like, uh, yo. Uh, I, I'm gonna send my report, and we have our own data transfer or like data courier network, mm -hmm. which means I can get my info out more reliably. So it's like uh, I'm thinking there would be public networks or like di let's say different groups, different companies, different uh, organizations can manage the. Uh, the data couriers who transit uh, between systems and within systems and uh, depending on it's uh, think of it like uh, there, there there would be like service tiers so if you are a powerful mercenary company you would probably have like a good reliable powerful network of data mm -hmm. exchange which means you have more uh, you have more of these drones or more more of these uh, maybe there there are also like uh, uh, midway beacons somewhere st that that are stationary that that will just uh, pass on the signal 
so so if you are a powerful mercenary company you would have a very well equipped uh, comms network mm -hmm. like in interplanetary interstellar allowing allowing for priority communication and yeah like but if you let's say but if you are a an in let's say you are an independent nation on some backwoods uh, backwater planet you might only have like a I don't know a dozen uh, data couriers that you can manage your own and mm -hmm. then you would have to rely on uh, uh, buying that service from somebody else and this is where the Pony Express comes in so it's like I would say there are different solutions different uh, uh, for different organizations but uh, the basic idea is that you can transfer data uh, through uh, vastness of space using uh, the same kind of transit that you use for moving people and ships So there. So there. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, and the and the beauty of this is that uh, uh, you can have, like, uh, if the story demands, you you can have like information that has not been shared, and you have you actually have to go to a certain place uh, to. Uh, to access this, or y or if you are uh, in info trading business like the scribe orders, you might be able to just uh, send out a query and like, yo, I need data on such and such. So this is like if you think of police procedurals, uh, one precinct sends out the request on somebody else's files into a bigger mm -hmm. system, so that that sort of thing. So we we can find analogs for near nearly all the necessary bits in the le in the current culture, and then put a little twist on them. probably like specifics that we can go, go into uh, depending on on a given story but yeah uh, thinking in in terms of these smaller uh, systems or smaller uh, networks and then thinking how they link up in a specific situation case by case basis uh, gives uh, i think it gives you more freedom but also more opportunities than thinking just in terms of a uh, universal network mm -hmm. back, back in the day, day. <coughs> I, I think i think i, I, think I, I want to keep, keep the system called neta x or neta x but back in the day uh, when it was purely forum stuff uh, Netex was the place where the big Netrix supercomputer used to live, and that's where all the information in the universe was stored, and it, it didn't make much sense. <laughs> so uh, well, you can you can keep the concept, you just uh, move it down to smaller scale. Like it is, it is maybe one homeworld or one culture's big archive thing that uh, that is super important for them, and they mm. would they like to advertise it as. This has all the knowledge in all the worlds. Uh, <laughs> some would say, <laughs> "Bitch, please." <laughs> 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 but uh, but within a, a given system and within uh, the given homeworld range, this might very well be the case. Like maybe it's the local, it's the local data monopoly uh, mm. that actually does have access to. Uh, all the archive knowledge, and maybe they have bought up all the uh, all the old data, and uh, and maybe they are renting out like servers and shit. This, on, on the other, other on the flip side of that, it's, it's probably, probably sort of like a kind of anarchist group who 
also got their hands on today, but are, are, are releasing it for free or mm -hmm. made it available for free. Yeah, you can't um, stop the signal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in in certain sense, uh, the scribe orders are kind of like they they are managing themselves. The, okay, they uh, depending on uh, on the order. I think we can uh, we can make uh, different scribe orders with very very different uh, attitudes. So the Svalbard is all about uh, storing and restoring and retrieving and uh, and selling the curious services to everybody. But there might be some uh, who are even more like uh, the Brotherhood of Steel who mo who would want to. Uh, uh, who would indeed want to gather up all the obscure data and then uh, disseminate it everywhere or somebody who who might want to gather all the data and then uh, sort of bury it and like we are not ready for this uh, we have mm -hmm. to hold on to this uh, and that that sort of thing so uh, so again different organizations different interests uh, different uh, behaviors Yes. Shall I wrap up the recording? Bank, bank yeah, the let's recording. let's <laughs> let's bank this. And if ev if if I uh, if I should uh, upload it, maybe. And if somebody listened to this point, then thank you very much. Yeah, you have been staring to our wonderful photos. Uh, mm -hmm. Stay tuned, etc. Yeah. Who reads something? <laughs>